Welcome to our ModX Foxy Cart uh, general overview tutorial. In this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we go about integrating Foxy Cart into ModX. Now, this tutorial is not going to really get into a lot of detail. We're not going to do uh, a whole lot of uh, CSS or anything like that. All we're going to do is really show you the basic setup. In a future tutorials, we'll get into a little more uh, advanced things like product options and stuff like that. But hopefully, after you watch this tutorial, you'll be able to walk away and at least get the start. Um, get your hands into the code, figure out how to set things up, and um, get things going from there. So uh, essentially we assume, number one, that you understand ModX, that you've got your own ModX website set up, and that you have a basic understanding of how to customize ModX. Uh, and we also assume that you've already set up your own FoxyCard account. If you haven't done so, um, go ahead and go over to FoxyCard's website. If you haven't watched their general overview tutorial, you can simply click on uh, Support, click on Docs, and if you come over right here, we've got a screencast section where I've created some uh, previous tutorials. And right here, we've got a starting, uh, getting started with FoxyCart, and that shows you just the basic start uh, setup and how to set up your account and put in a few things, a uh, few of the codes in. Um, but what we're going to do is we'll assume you've already set up FoxyCart, your own account, and we're just going to move forward from there. So to begin with, let's go ahead and um, you know, look at it. We've got a over here at this example. I've got a, a basic ModX website, and what I want to do is go in and add a product section. And so it's very simple to do. What we'll do is the first step is we'll come over to our Foxy Card account. I've already logged in here, and um, right up here under the store section, you've got this sample code. Go ahead and click on that, and you can come over here and copy some of this code to get started uh, to kind of jump start this process. And if you want to go back later and figure out how to go about customizing, go to the uh, FoxyCart website and cl again click on uh, Support and Docs. And if you come over here to adding your product links and forms, uh, they've got a little more thorough explanation of what we're about to run through here. But we're just going to go go ahead and, and uh, do a general overview. So the first step will be to grab this code that they nicely provide for you. And I'm just going to simply copy this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my ModX login area, and I've already set up a particular template, and I've just simply called it uh, Products. I'm going to come right here, click on Products, and here in the Head section, right here bef uh, before a close head tag, I'm going to paste this code that I just copied. So I'm going to grab that, paste it in there. Okay, so as you see, I just pasted it in. Again, all I did is took the code that they provide us in the sample code, pasted it here in the Head section right before the close head tag. And I'm going to go ahead and save this document or rather this template and this is a uh, template called products. Now I've created a product section. This is a container here and I'm going to go ahead and start adding documents in here. And again this is we're just going to set up one product in this tutorial. In future tutorials we'll look at setting up multiple, having you know laid out on pages so people can choose from different products um, you know and, and different uh, things like that. But for now we'll just create one document. So what I did is I simply came over to products and I put my mouse on the icon, right click, or I'm sorry, click rather, and left click and choose create document here. And I'm going to call this um, um, XYZ widget. This is going to be the name of my product. Very clever name. And uh, click on page settings and we've got this set to publish. So we're good there. Okay. Now XYZ widget is the best product on the market and you can buy it here Ta-da! so we put in some content that we're going to talk about our product here and we'll go ahead and click continue editing we'll click save now how do we go about adding the product price the weight the product code uh, well what we're going to do is we're going to create some template variables so we can go in and, and uh, whether you're maintaining this website or the client that you're going to turn this site over can go ahead and maintain uh, the different attributes for their product. So I'm going to come over here, I've got a new tab, or rather another tab open up, and I'm going to come up here to my, um, my uh, different tabs up here. I choose resources, go to manage resources, click on template variable, and I'm going to create a new template variable. And I'm going to call this one uh, product price. And we'll call this product price enter okay what I wrote there was basically I wrote this before so that's why I did an autofill but what I what I put in is I put enter the price of the product do not put the 
dollar symbol or whatever currency your particular country uses. Um, only put the numerical, what else did I write? Price. So what I'm trying to tell my uh, client that's going to be maintaining the site is don't put a dollar symbol in before you put, you know, the the um, product price. So, for example, if they were to put, you know, the dollar symbol, then, you know, 30 bucks or 30 after that, it would throw the system off. So what we're trying to do is just say, hey, look, only put in uh, a numerical price. And by the way, you can create uh, your own custom uh, snippets using PHP if you want to strip out anything other than a, a number, but we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. So what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll go ahead and choose uh, this particular product price to be associated with this uh, product template that we've already created. Okay, so I'm going to create a new product category here. I'm just going to call this product so we can keep all our template variable one category so we can quickly find them later if we need to. Okay, so I'm going to choose uh, continue editing. Oh, well, rather I could have just chose close. So we'll go ahead and save that. Here's our new category with product price. I'm going to set up, I believe, uh, two more template variables. We'll set up a product code. So we'll say product code, product code, enter, what do I got? The product code here. And they can enter whatever value that, that they want to associate with that particular product. Um, we'll come down here to products. We'll associate it with this template. Come over to our categories and choose products. Okay, we're going to create one more. We'll call this uh, product weight. So go ahead and put in product weight. And again, you don't have to type it the way I am with this template variable. I, I just this is my way. I always do things. I put a name with an underscore in between just to keep things nice and clean. So we'll, uh, you know, whatever you want to put, if it's just weight or however you want to do it, it's up to you. Uh, the exact name is not important as long as, uh, obviously, you, you use that exact template variable name later in your uh, form. But, again, you can name it whatever you feel comfortable with. So enter, what do I have here? Again, I just hit autofill because I've already done this before. But what I put is enter the product weight. And I put do not put pounds, only put numerical value, for example, three. Okay, and I'm going to leave this input type as text. Um, come down here to products. Again, I'm going to put this in the product category. All right, and I'm going to save it. So what we've done, just to recap, is I've created three template variables, product code, product weight, and product, or I'm sorry, product code, price, and weight. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll come over here to our template. And again, this is products. This is a template, and all these template variables that we just created, uh, we checked each one of these to associate with the product template we're using um, in our example here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save and I've got continue editing so essentially it refreshes. And so what we'll do is we'll come down to the bottom and these are the three template variables that we just set up. Product price, code, and weight. Alright, um, we're almost there. So at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to my template. And we've already put in the foxy cart code here in the head and really all this is is a combination of uh, CSS and JavaScript so that whenever someone clicks on um, our add to uh, cart button, it's going to pull open a thick box with the product information in that thick box. It's going to have a cart nicely placed on our screen. It's a real slick system. Okay, so what we'll do is I'm going to come back over here to my Foxy Cart account. Again, I'm just going into the manager area or the admin area of my Foxy Cart account. All right, and again, I came over here to the sample code section here. Now, we've already used this, uh, we've already put this in the head. Now, they've again nicely created some. Uh, a sample code for us. They've given us two types of code. We can either do a link example. I'm just highlighting this. You see here they commented in link example. Or you can use a form example. Um, for this particular uh, tutorial I'm going to use a form and again it's up to you You know what your needs are. If, if it's just a simple link that you want to put in with you know just a product name and price and just someone clicks a button and adds it to cart, fine. Uh, but if you want to do some more advanced stuff like down the road maybe you have for example, product sizes and stuff like that. A form is obviously the way you want to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab this code here. I'm just grabbing all the form code from the open form tag to the close form tag here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come over here. And I've got my content uh, right here. This associates with my document content, whatever someone types in this area. It outputs uh, right here in content. Okay, so, and by the way, these textile tags, it's just a type of format that I use um, to create good clean code. And again, you may not have that in there, so just put it wherever you need to, this code that we just copied over. So what I did is I just simply 
pasted this in. And I'm going to take select out because we're not going to, in this tutorial, we're not going to give um, size options and things like that. We'll do that in future tutorials. Okay, well, let's go through here and look. We've got a form, and we're going to go through and make some modifications. Okay, the first one is name. The value equals cool example. Well, we want for our client, whenever they log into ModX, they can quickly change the name of any given product. So what I'm going to do is we're going to call this um, page title. Okay, all we did is I typed uh, the bracket, uh, the asterisk, page title, the asterisk, and then a close bracket. Okay, now the product price, and it says value equals 10. Well, again, this is something that we want our client to be able to maintain. So if we come over to our template variable section, here is product price, and we'll go ahead and click on that. I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to put that right there, bracket, asterisk, product underscore price, uh, asterisk with the close bracket. Okay, now we've got two other template variables that we want to add in. And so let's come over here real quick to Foxycart, uh, their website. I'm going to show you what I'm about to do here. You've got different attributes that you can put in to your form or your link. Um, and these are the ones that are listed here. So far, we've chosen name and price. But in this example, we want to also add the ability for our client to be able to modify code so they can keep their inventory and everything straight and wait. So what we'll do is we're going to use code in this example. And we'll use wait. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, just for the sake of speed here, I'm just going to copy these, I'm going to drop down a line, and then I'm going to paste them. Okay, so let's go through and change these two new ones we just created. I'm going to call this code, and again, this is an attribute that is over here in this section. We've got code, we've got weight, so I'm going to change the next one to weight. Okay, code value equals and then let's come over here and grab our template variable for product code so we'll just grab this copy it come back over here code then we're going to paste it okay same thing wait let's come back over here product wait I'm just going to copy that bring it back over here. Oops, hit refresh, didn't mean to do that. That's okay, we'll come back in here. Okay. And then we'll paste that there. Product weight. Okay, so let me just recap real quick what we've done. We're creating a form. Let's just kind of... There we go, we've got this form right here. And what we've done is we've simply set up the uh, values for name, product price, product code, product weight, and then this is the information right here for our submit button. So it says add a cool example. I'm going to just say add to cart. Add to cart. Okay. Now if we've done everything right, this should work. Um, so let's go ahead and save this real quick. Saved our uh, template come back over here to our particular product document and let's look make sure we've done everything right. We've set in our page title right here, XYZ widget. Put in some content where we can talk about the proje uh, product. Oh, we didn't put in uh, the, the price code await, so that's important. Okay, so let's say our product is equal to $50. Our code, we'll just say SKU001 and the product uh, weight, we'll just say five pounds. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And let's come over here to our website and look at what we got. Uh, this is a document ID 99. Right here, we see 99. So I'm just going to come over here at the end right here. I'm just going to put 99 and go ahead and hit Enter. OK. Now, again, this is very stripped down. We don't have any images or anything. But again, this is just, we'll get into that a little later, but this is just for point of showing you just how basic this is to set up. Okay, here is our, uh, our uh, page title. Here is the content that we typed in right over here in our document content section right here in our document. Okay, so now in theory is if we hit add to cart, everything should work. So we click that and sorry, I've got a product from earlier when I was doing some testing. So there it is, our product shows up. Let me just do that again and clear that out. I'm going to click Add Cart, 
and ta-da, there it is. XYZ widget, uh, which is the name, let me look over here, that we gave right here, page title. Our product price shows up right there, $50. And again, this is what we put in here, $50. Um, the code and then the weight. So I have it styled to checkout page. So when you click checkout, it's just going to go to a real generic uh, page. But we cover how to set up your checkout page in other tutorials. But the point is, uh, this works. So that, in a nutshell, is how you go about doing the basic, very, very basic setup of Mod X and FoxyCart. Now, obviously, you may want to get into a lot more advanced situations where you have um, product modifiers, uh, you know, things like uh, shirt sizes or things like that. And again, this is all very easy to do. We'll probably cover that in other tutorials. But in a nutshell, that's how you go about integrating Modex and FoxyCart together.